Facebook Live up today. We invite you to share our video on your um, page, if you will. We appreciate that. Give other people opportunity to hear what it is that God has to say and be a blessing for your lives. I noticed like there was almost 300 people. Well, let me not say 300 people. There were like 300 views mm -hmm. of our Facebook video from last week. Yes. So um, it's making a difference. It's blessing people. Yeah. And we're grateful to God for yes. that. Amen. In Jesus' name. And even Herman Blaylock is watching. Uh, watching Guy watching. Um, and our friends from Brazil and other places. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the holy name. Uh, do you have a sense on the inside of yourself that uh, now more than ever we really need the power of God on our side yeah. we need to be covered under the shadow of the almighty we need for him to make a way for us yeah. out of those places where it seems to be no way and he does that uh, just before we get into the lesson wanted to remind us about, I brought up on uh, on this last Wednesday in uh, in times of service that <clears throat> in our Wednesday comment, let me invite you to come on to our word study on Wednesday. Uh, you, you, you're tremendously blessed. Uh, God is sharing good insight and good information yeah. with us in Jesus' name. But we said then that it's really important to be at the place where we as individuals receive from God the unction to reach out and touch the lives of others. Amen. Yes. Amen. Uh, she begat she. Uh, yeah. I've scuffled for, not scuffled, but I want to be sure from over many different uh, time frames to carry in my heart and spirit that God sends to the church those he wants to be in the church Amen. and in that church. And uh, that's my position here at Salvation Temple Church. And, and uh, in the Acts, we're not doing there, but we do that on Wednesday. It said, the Lord adds to the church daily, such as should be saved. And of course, we say that, we believe that that's the word. But also, we also understand that he does that through us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Say out loud, through me? Through me. Yes, through you too. Okay, so let's get into the lesson for this morning. The E word is... Followers to leaders. Followers to leaders. And in, in the main introduction statement, it says that Father God has us at an important crossroad in our lives. And by that I mean that, uh, you know, you can almost feel that uh, in connection with with our individual lives and in connection with world order, uh, it's important to be a good student of the Word of God. Amen. 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 Because there's many different things going on, most importantly, in our individual lives. But also, there's a reflection of things going on in the world around us, Amen. and we have to have a steady hand on God's Word to help strengthen our sense of hope, our sense of accomplishment, and our sense of being at peace. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because there's uh, so many things. I, I, I hadn't said that to my wife yet, but I thought it several times uh, about, it's just fascinating to me how it is that wherever it was that news media chose to always show bad news. Mm -hmm. Somebody died way over yonder, some explosion in another country way around the world. And uh, I, I don't know if, which came first, the chicken or the egg, but it just seems like that uh, they do that, I suppose, to increase their ratings. Uh, but uh, that constant barrage of negative and that constant barrage of bad news, it'll wear you out Amen. if you if you if you let it. Yeah. And uh, so I, I, I said all that to say that uh, I'm looking this morning to 
be able to deal with in us to give us a sense of, 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 of a dividing line between how we allow everything in our lives to get our attention. And then the next thing you know, we're so busy dealing with those things that we somehow uh, lose the sense of unction about the power of God. Amen. And, and I don't know, sometimes things come up quick, some things come up drastic, and then there's those others that just keep humming along all the time. And yet I've come to tell you today, as we said at the beginning of this year, that everything going on in this year, God has already handled it. Amen. And if we make that our position, then when we approach whatever, we can approach it, approach it from having the strength to know God has an answer. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. You didn't shout, jump. Let me say it one more time. God has an answer. Amen. God has what you need. God is able to do whatever that needs to be done in your life. And the best thing I'm going to tell you this morning is it's important to, for us to just step back and let God do it. Huh? It sounds cliche, sounds cute, but you would be amazed as to how much we are in God's way trying to deal with stuff in our lives. And uh, the days, the days that when we decide uh, to just really step back and let God look, really, really, listen, really, just hang up the phone, come on up, really, just walk away, go get into bed, or, or better yet, go to the prayer closet, and just deal with it based on that's what God told us to do. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. So then, the second part of the introduction says, God is, he is, Father God is presenting to us a time of decision that can order our steps to fulfill his plan for our lives. Um, I, the, over these past uh, years, and uh, through issues and things, uh, one of the things that's high in my heart is to be sure that I fulfill what it is God put me on the planet to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I, I pray that if, if we keep reminding you about that, <laughs> that uh, you too will uh, take an opportunity to say, okay, God, because a lot of people have this kind of moment in their lives where they're scuffling and struggling with, I don't know, or they say, well, I, I, I don't know what God called me to do or what he wants me to do, or thus and so. And uh, when you're a student of the word of God, when you're in a good, solid relationship with God, you can get that taken care of like snap. Amen. Mm -hmm. God's not confused. He's not playing games with us. He's not doing hide and go seek. He knows very clearly why he put us here. Mm -hmm. And he knows what it is he wants us to do since he put us here. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Say, he knows why he put me here. Say that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then so the dividing line again is how much energy, time, and focus are we going to give to the distractions yeah. over and against Spending time focused with God, who has the plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it just seems to me that we're in a place of decision mm -hmm. in our lives Amen. that can order our steps to fulfill his plan for us. And what is the decision? The decision is this. Are we going to do things God's way? Mm -hmm. Or are we going to do things our way? Mm -hmm. Come on now. It could be that, it can just be that clear. Do it God's way or do it our way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so well then, uh, do you want <clears throat> purpose? Do you feel like you have purpose in your life? Do you have reasons to wake up in the morning? Remember that thing about good morning, Lord, over against old Lord this morning. Uh, did you catch that? Yeah. You could wake up and say, oh, good morning, Lord. 
Or you can say, oh, Lord. It's <laughs> morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, the world, science and all those kind of things, say how important it is for people that you have to have. It's good to have a reason to wake up. Yes. Amen. I mean, you need to have a reason to wake up. Yeah. Uh, and so then, therefore, uh, my uh, offering to us today is to have a communication link with God so that when we sleep at night, we know in the morning he has a purpose for us. Amen. And, and, and I'm asking us to, to raise our purpose level above just going to work mm -hmm. or just to pay bills or just to deal with the scuffle we've been struggling with for the last weeks or months or whatever. Amen. Mm -hmm. God wants us when we get up in the morning to see the new mercy mm -hmm. that he makes available to us every morning. Yeah. Amen. Somebody shout out loud, new mercy. New, new mercy. mercy. And he brings it to us every morning. So if you want purpose, if you want joy, if you want victory, mm -hmm. let me share this information with you as this is how you can have purpose or refresh your purpose. You can have joy, increase your joy. You can have victory. And, and listen, remember, remember, God plays beyond nine innings. Amen. 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 God, God, God doesn't stop at strike three. <laughs> huh? Uh, and so therefore, this business about having victory, we have to be anchored in a place where we recognize that, that it's our Father who owns the whole stadium <laughs> and the teams. Come on now. And the concession people. Yeah. And all of the fans. Amen. And therefore, he's going to see to it that the game turns out to be the way he wanted it to be. Yeah. Huh? And, he, and I, he didn't call me to be a loser. I don't know if he's been a loser. He didn't, call, he didn't call us to be no loser. So therefore, when we communicate with him, he brings us to a place of victory. Yeah. So then our main scripture text is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 at verse 16 and 17. I'm going to get into this thing about followers going to be leaders. In order to be a good leader, you need to be what? A good follower. Yeah. And consequently, the, the arrangement that God has made for us, an opportunity he's given us, is that he wants to exercise us in followhood. That's the one I just came up with. <laughs> uh, because uh, many times, with, with our attitudes and we, we always seem to have a better way, and, and we, we're good Monday morning quarterbacks, and, and uh, we, we point, uh, what is the hindsight? Hindsight is 2020, you know. Well, the deal is, there is a leadership that God has put in us. Uh -huh. Come on, now. There's a leadership that God has put in you. Amen. God, you know, they sing the song, there's a king in you. Well, today I'm saying there's a leader in you. Amen. And consequently, I believe to be able to reach in and get that leader on the inside of you, I have to challenge you to see and look at your followhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. People often wonder why, why I'm not at a better place why am I not in a different place? How come that person is up there and it's not me? Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Well, one of the first areas we want to get to is have strength and confidence in the Word of God yes. and believe that what is said in the Word of God is true for us. Yeah. And when we put into practice those things that are said in God's Word, then we will receive the things that God has in store for us. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 16, this verse stands out, wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be a follower. Amen. Be a follower of me, the writer says. Then he says in verse 17, for this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into what? 
Remembrance. Remembrance of what? My ways, My ways which be where? In Christ. Oh. Mm -hmm. Which be in Christ. In that blip. <laughs> huh? Mm -hmm. He is saying to us, he's sending Timothy to help them know that, or help to, to, to help remind them to remember his ways. Whose ways? Say his right. ways. Yeah. What, what, right now, just say his ways. Right? His right. ways. And the reason he is saying his ways is because he is saying to us, you look back, you see my life, and therefore I want you to remember what you saw me do. Mm -hmm. And do what you saw me do because the things that I do are in where? In Christ. Uh, okay, so then, oh, then for some, oh, there it is right there. Okay. <laughs> Listen to this. There's not a better way. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. In the advertising market in the world of commerce and things of that nature. Remember, they used to have the, uh, I don't know, they had a, I don't know if they had a 10, 10 ounce bottle of pop, then they had a 12 ounce bottle. And I think I remember the day when they had a 16 ounce bottle. I mean, it was like, whoopee, you know, a whole 16 ounces? <laughs> hey, all to myself. <laughs> and then, somewhere along the line, this other store, comes up with this 72 ounce big go. Huh? Or then they say, well, you can cut your grass with a pair of scissors, or you cut your grass with a push lawnmower, or you can push your you cut your grass with a motorized lawnmower that you have to push, or you can buy a motorized lawnmower that pulls itself and you just walk around behind it. Mm -hmm. So then you see this uh, this mindset of there must be something better. Mm -hmm. There's got to be something bigger. Mm -hmm. And the marketing industries and advertising industries, they always try to come out with something better mm -hmm. so that people will buy it instead of buying the other one. Yeah. And the other one changes to see if they got one. How many of you, well, no, I can, can I do, I, I guess so. How many of you all don't have an Apple phone? Come on out, you know. Sad. 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 The only thing you got is a knockoff. A, a wannabe apple. You know. But but the point I, the point I tried to make is there's always some product that's trying to be better than the other product, and usually the product that's trying to be better than the other product is trying to be better because that particular product was really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, in the things of God, mm -hmm. there's no better way. No better way. You know, they did that, the, they did that, uh, this is the size, regular size, uh, small, medium, large, uh, giant economy, Super double X, bigger than that size. Mm -hmm. Or, or, uh, I know, here's this, this, this damnable uh, expression. I know what the Word of God says, but. Mm -hmm. Come on now. There is no better way to be a Christian than to be a follower of the Apostle Paul here. And he said he was following Christ. Mm -hmm. So that when you follow him, what are you doing? Uh, following, Christ. following Christ. Is there, and now remember, remember back I used to be associated with this church called Greater Christ Baptist Church. And I went to Africa or, some, or India somewhere, and the person looked at me one time and said, what's greater than Christ? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> greater. And so, let me ask you, What's greater than following Christ? WWJD. What would Jesus do? 
And most of the time, and I want us to take a little inventory every now and then and look back and see, most of the time, we've been doing everything but what Jesus did. Amen. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because we've got reasons, we've got excuses, we've got proof, we've got people on our side who agree that, that we can do even, uh, we can do differently than what Jesus did, and it'll be all right. I need you to say out loud, there is no better way. Come on. There is no better way. So then, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 16, he said, Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Okay, followers of me. When you hear that, when you hear that, what do you think? What is he saying? What is he, the writer here, what is he saying? What is he saying, basically? Do what I do. Do what I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Follow me. Imitate. 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 Yeah. Look and see what I'm doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And then in the latter part of that verse, do what I teach. Mm -hmm. Verse 17. For this call to I send up you to know this who is my brothers, my beloved son, and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I do what? Teach, teach what? Everywhere, Everywhere where? In every in church. Every church. Yeah. Mm. Here's a big swap against the denominations and churches in the body of Christ, isn't it? Hmm. Just kind of seems like one of the things they do lately, and they've probably been doing it for decades too, one of the things that they seem to do lately is that this church over here teaches that, but we teach this over here. Mm -hmm. And so therefore we'll run over there because they're teaching that now. Or we'll run over, well, they quit teaching, but well, we're going to go over and go over there because they teach this. But he said, what does he say? He teach what? What does he teach? Everywhere. What? what? Everywhere. I, 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 I do what? I, what did he say? What's that certain person? I, 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 I teach what? Everywhere. Everywhere. Do what? Everywhere. Okay. I teach what? Everywhere. 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 In every church. Mm -hmm. Do you think he teaches a little something different than this one and a little something different than that one? No. Or something different over there? No. What does he teach? The right. same thing mm -hmm. in every church. Mm -hmm. And I was reading in the, uh, the other week, I was reading about church growth and attendance and things of that nature. And one of the places in the Harvard School of Business or something, they had this the School of Divinity, Harvard School of Divinity, they had this deal about how many denominations are there in the United States? Mm -hmm. And they say, ain't no, ain't no way you can tell. <laughs> There's so many different ones. There used to be, I used to have a book called 300 denomination in the United States and Canada, and that was decades ago, so you can't begin to imagine how many they are now. And then ask yourself, why? Hmm. Why do we need different denominations? Why? Especially with a verse like this. He said, wherefore I beseech you, be followers of me, for this cause have I sent unto you to Mophias, who is my beloved son and faithful little Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance mm -hmm. of my ways, which be in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. Mm -hmm. How many different, how many, okay, okay, I'll do this one. How many different ways does there need to be, and understand how I say this, how many different ways does there need to be in laying on the hands? Mm -hmm. What? Right. You just lay your hands. Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. You know, um, some of them shake it. <laughs> <laughs> some, of them, some of them cuff it, you know. Some of them slap with it. Some of them throw the coat at it. Come on now. <laughs> I think this one is me. Stop. Well, 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 okay, okay. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm a, well, well. I, well, I, okay, okay. If it, it, it's in the public domain, okay? Yeah. That there's some, since she said no. <laughs> Well, anyway, <laughs> how many different ways can you lay on hands? <laughs> and the issue is, 
right. It should only be just one way. Amen. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, put you, bring you into remembrance of my ways. Uh, Paul, the writer, uh, had a certain way to pray. He, he, he visited, went, traveled, this, that, this. How many other ways, how many different ways does there need to be to accomplish what it is that he saw Christ do? And did you hear Jesus say, I only do what I see my Father do. I only say what I hear my Father say. And here we've got 32,000 denominations just because one say a little something different than somebody else. And we wonder why the lack of power in the church denomination structure across the board. Well, I teach everywhere in every church. Then we go down to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 20 in that same section there. And it says, for the kingdom of God uh-oh, is not in what? Word. Word, but in what? Power. Power. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Talk is cheap. <laughs> Amen. Hmm. Uh, what, I, what, I, what I wrote down here extra that I didn't put up there, let what you say be done. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Not just words. But in what? Power. Not just because you yet talk a lot, but because you have results. Mm -hmm. That's what counts. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's, it's, it fascinates me. You know, a lot of people have this big attitude about mega church types, Joel Osteen, different types like that. And they always, oh yeah, he's not this. And they're not that. And rah, rah, rah. But he's got the largest denomination. In the U.S., huh? 40,000, whatever that count is, 40,000 people they deal with on a weekend. Huh? It's just saying for 40,000. 20, you know what you said? 40,000. And so you're going to stand back here with your little water pistol and shoot at it? Huh? And at the end of his message, what does he say? Because you heard it so much. What does he say? I never want to. I never want to close out a missing opportunity to give you what chance to what make Jesus the Lord of your life. Hmm? Oh, he's a motivational. He he's too soft. Yeah, but at the end of every message, you can you can do it by, by verbatim because he does it the exact same way. Huh? What does he offer to people? Christ. Christ. To make Christ. Jesus the Lord. Hmm? See? So, people want to take pot shots and throw rocks and have all of this explanation and discussion about what so forth and this and that and the other. But hey, the, the, the kingdom of God is not in what? Word. Word but what? In power. In power. Then therefore, that means what you say should be done. Mm -hmm. Or shut up. <laughs> <laughs> or don't say it in the first place. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, so then therefore, uh, he is saying, follow my ways. Come on. He's saying, I'm following Christ. When I lay hands on the sick, what happens? They recover. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. Or when I speak to demons, they go. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so then, uh, I just want to set up in our thinking process the place of deciding it is important for us to be a follower yes. of Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, you know, you've got, you know, my. Uh, so-and-so is my bishop, such-and-such such is my apostle, so-and-so uh, and so-and-so is the great evangelist, such-and-such such is this and that. But who should we follow? Christ. In every way. Mm -hmm. 
Is there any of us, I, I, almost want to, I almost want you to just answer this no matter how you feel. How many of you really don't know what Jesus did about whatever? <laughs> Is there anything that you don't know what Jesus did about? No? Okay, so then there's, so that, that means in order for us to follow him, we need to know how he did what he did, Amen. right? Amen. Amen. And where do we find out where he did what he did? Where do we find that out? Amen. In the word of God. Amen. And then and being a follower of him means that what should we do? Study his word. Well, well, study his word, trust him, but we should do what he did about whatever he did about whatever he did. Amen. Hmm? And it's not hard to know, it's not hard to find out what Jesus did about whatever he had to deal with, is it? No. no. It's written in the Word of God. Yeah. Okay? So then it's going to become important for us to find out what he did and then make a, make a decision, make a connection, make a commitment to just do what he did. And, and, and I found out that when we do what he did, we get what he got. Come on. Yeah. Say out loud again one more time. There is no better way. Go ahead. There is no better way. Okay. All right. So then. Okay. So then. Um, uh, okay. So then let's go to our support text scripture. Uh, and, and then I, I'm sorry. And I want you to remember this thing about let what you say be done. Let what you say be done. Okay, so then it's four text scripture. William Dallas down, Dallas back up. William Dallas back up to like seventy one. <clears throat> okay, First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse number one through verse number three. And I put emphasis on here in this followers business because that's an important place where we need to start. We need to start at choosing to follow somebody who uh, accomplished what it is that they set out to do, Amen. all right? And specifically because we're in the church, I'm talking about following Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 1, it says, Be ye followers, followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this is going to be nice. You, you all can let me say this. You just stopped me before. <laughs> but you know, I've dealt with some pastor preachers, bishops, that I wouldn't want no more follow them than a the man in the moon. <laughs> Come on now. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus. Here, here, let me give you this one. Let me give you this one. Because back when I was a young preacher coming up, young, young, young. That was so long ago. <laughs> but I feel better. Yeah, I feel young. Uh you know, the we went to this, this pastor's study back behind the sanctuary. And uh, you know, now I don't I don't uh, you know I have my position about stuff we do and God's grace, but still, this preacher, these preachers were sitting back in this office talking about the members of the congregation using the N-word, mm -hmm. the the my N-word, and mm -hmm. you know. And, this and that, and talking about the women they dealt with. And, and then he said, okay, let's get ready to go out to preach. He's going out to preach. So he reaches down. By his desk, he picks up this can and spits his tobacco juice in the can and set it down. Going out. I've been in the pastor's study, smoke everywhere. Uh, uh, uh. And, and then, then, okay, so that's for that part. Then I've dealt with pastors and apostles and prophets and bishops and deacons that are just nasty attitude personality people. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know, oh, that's my bishop. You know, that's my pastor. You haven't been in his office yeah. <laughs> on a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm trying to get us, I'm trying to get us to 
embrace this sense of be ye followers of me as I also am of Christ. There are some unforgiving bishops in big church pulpits to this very day. Come on now. There's some evangelists and some prophets and some apostles who don't go to that church over there. No matter who comes. I can't let them see me up in there. Come on now. He said, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now, I'm going to flip the thing here. Just I'm going to flip this pancake just a little bit to say it like this. If you're looking at somebody, you need to know what Christ does so that you can compare if what they're doing is the same thing that Christ does. Good word. Good That's word. Good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if they're not following him, mm -hmm. what does he say here? Mm -hmm. You shouldn't follow, should follow them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he's just a man. Jesus was a man too. Mm -hmm. Yes, but you don't understand. Jesus understood. Yeah. Huh? Uh, Okay, verse 2. Now, I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and do what? Keep your ordinances. And keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, you, we used to sing this song, the creed, creed, you know, I believe in the Father and the Son and Jesus and Holy Spirit and three or one. And I believe in the resurrection and he's coming again, etc., etc. There are certain basic ordinances that should be followed in the church. I don't care. No matter what. Amen. No matter what. Because he said, keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Huh? If he said we break bread this way on that place, and fine. If he said we wash feet, then fine. If he said this marriage is a sacrament, then that's a, but hmm? because you can see along the way if you deal a little bit with either church church history or even uh, individual people's lives, you can see that when people start to shift away from just doing things like God said do, then the next thing you know, they're out here somewhere with a bunch of foolishness. Mm -hmm. Come on mm -hmm. now, come on. Mm -hmm. Keep the ordinances. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, wow, one of the biggies that uh, just came on the news the other day, and I think they're still in the process of this particular one, where, and I don't know the church denomination, I can't remember, uh, it's either Episcopal or either the Church of Christ or the United Church of Christ or the Episcopal Church or whatever, whatever, they are giving serious consideration to ordaining a transgender deacon. You know? And it, but, but, you know, yeah, but he or she has a right. Wait a minute. Wait. What does the ordinance say? Yes, but you can't be so hard. You can't be so this. That's just, oh, that's too fundamental. Hey, stick with the ordinance. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hmm? Amen. Yeah. Well, no, now I'm way out here now. So <laughs> I'm going to throw this out here and I'm going to run on that. <laughs> um, I mean, just if you just stop and think for a minute, that, you know, that's why you had so much. Uh, sexual abuse of minors in the Roman Catholic Church yeah. Yeah. and covered it up and it's been going on for decades. Amen. You, you know, you said you got to stick to what the ordinance said. Amen. Because when you start to add this or allow that, then the next thing you know, you got major mess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and the outsiders, all they see is that's 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 the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the way Christians act. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then, 
Uh, let me swing back to this verse here, First Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 2. Now, I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things, and I need you to say it one more time. Keep what? The Keep ordinance. the ordinances as I delivered them to you. I just, I, I, I'm sorry that that just feels old-fashioned. It feels old foggy. It feels out of date, out of time. It feels, you know, backwards and, and all of that. But it's still true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This verse 3, but I would have you to know that the head of every man is what? Christ. Christ. And the head of the woman is what? The man. And the head of Christ is who? God. God. Okay, so then I didn't put the head of the woman is the man. Because I didn't, I wanted to be able to get out of here, and I didn't know if was going to be with me to get to the door. So I just skipped that one, and we stick with the head of every man is Christ, okay? and the head of Christ is God. So then, who's going to be the head of the man? No, no, every man, the head of every man is Christ, and the head of Christ is who? God. So who's the head of the man? Christ. No. Look, okay, let's read it first. Look up here. But I would have you to know that the head of every man is Christ, and head of every woman is the man. And the head of Christ is who? God. Okay, so then who is the head of every man? God. 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 If Christ is the head of man, and God is the head of Christ, and the man is following Christ, yes. then God is his head too. Yes. Yes. Okay. Took a while to get them. <laughs> what did you say, Joy? <laughs> He's the head. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. See? See? <laughs> he said, and he's the head. And she's like, not over here. <laughs> But the succession I'm trying to show you, the connection I'm trying to relate here for us, is that when we choose to be the follower mm -hmm. of the person who is following Christ, yes. we in actuality are following yeah. God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And when we're following God, then we connect with him and he has his way of dealing with whatever we have to deal with Amen. to bring his plan to life mm -hmm. yeah. in our lives. Yeah. Okay? Amen. So then, when you hear me declare it is important to be a follower, follower of Christ, mm -hmm. then you're being a follower of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, here's my teaching point. It takes great followers to become what? Great, great leaders. leaders. Now, in the secular world and, and those other kind of worlds where they teach you that kind of thing, uh, uh, success, motivation, speaking, all that kind of thing, et cetera, et cetera. But, 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 but I, I just want to call our attention to the recognition of when you want to be a leader, you really should focus on being a good follower. Amen. 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 Because great followers mm -hmm. become great leaders. Amen. Mm -hmm. And there are, there are uh, tons of secular presentations that talk about uh, if you're a leader of a company, one of the best ways to keep good employees mm -hmm. is to treat them so good, they feel like, ain't no way I should leave this company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Huh? Right. And being a great leader does not mean that you tell everybody what to do. Right. A great leader said, what do you think about this? Right. Right. What's your ideas about thus yeah. and so? And then that and there. Okay? So then, when I say from these scriptures that it is important for us to be followers of Christ, followers of God, followers of God, followers of Christ, being then therefore followers of God, we're following the greatest leaders yeah. ever. Yeah. <laughs> And therefore, we see what he did, we say what he said, we do what he did, and then we will have what he said. Yeah. 
Now, uh, here I now need to get the definitions ready. Definitions of follow. So in action point, it says followers follow. And in followers follow, I looked up follower in Webster's 1828 dictionary, and this is how it reads. Follower, one says, one who comes, did it, one who comes on time, <laughs> goes or moves after another in the what? Same, Same course. Uh, how, many of you have, how, many, how many of you have ever ridden on a moped? Or a little motorcycle. Any of you ever ridden on a little motorcycle? How many of you ever ridden with, on a motorcycle with somebody riding behind you? Somebody on the back behind you? Okay, so what happens when you lean in the curb this way when you got somebody riding behind you and they lean out the other way? What happens? Whoopy, whoop. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the following has to be in the same course. When I lean, you lean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I tell it? It's long ago. It's long ago. We were in Bermuda way back decades ago. We were in Bermuda. And we were riding on these little mopeds. And I'm just barely. And I get up to this curve and I get ready to lean in the curve. And Mrs. Scott's like, oh no. She ain't leaning in that curve. So she goes the other way. I don't care what you do. I ain't leaning. I'm that was leaning. I'm gonna fall over. <laughs> so, but 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 in the sense of being a follower, you should follow in the same course. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's how in organizations, uh, churches, in groups, and what have you. If you can't follow the leader, you should go to another group Amen. where you can follow Amen. because you're going to keep the whole organization yeah. out of kilter. Yeah. They lean in that way, you lean in over here. Okay. All right. Then, point number two, a follower is one that takes another as his guide in doctrine, opinions, or example. One who receives the opinions and imitates the example of another and adherent and imitator. Mm -hmm. And then look number three. Number three, uh, there. One who obeys, worships, and honors. Now all of that's followed. That's the thing that followers do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Back in the teaching days, and I wrote this up here. Back in the teaching days, I would just push the issue with people about paying attention to detail mm -hmm. and do what you told them. <laughs> <laughs> because if you're going to be a good leader, you have to be a good follower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there were times when I would tell people, I don't care what you think. <laughs> you do what I tell you to do. Yeah. Straight up. <laughs> if, if, what you thought was so great, I would pay to come and hear you. <laughs> you paid money to come and hear me. Yes. So, up and <laughs> do what you told. <laughs> hey, so then, so then, here's the point. Run that back to two, put number two back, number two back. One that takes another as his guide in doctrines, opinions, or example, one who receives opinions and imitates the example of another and inherits an imitator. When, 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 when you're called to be a follower, <laughs> when you're called to be a follower, then these are the kind of things that you do. Mm -hmm. and then number three says, one more, number three again, says one who obeys, mm -hmm. worships, and honors. Mm -hmm. Now put that piece on there because when we're following Christ and the head of Christ is God, then we should obey God. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. We should worship God. Yes. We should honor God. Yes. Amen. And we honor him by being on time Amen. with the appointment that he set for when we have service on Sunday morning. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Then, let's get
get the definition of leader because you go through this spiral process to, to prepare, qualify, or to become the leader. A leader is one that leads or conducts a guide, a conductor, number two, a chief, a commander, a captain. That's why when God tells you something, you say, yes, sir. You don't know, you can talk back. You don't, know, well, I, you know, the, and I use the Private Ryan example so often about when that, when that, when that boat sails up to the beach and there's gunfire and explosions going everywhere and that door drops down, when that captain says, get off the boat, you get off the boat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, everybody on the boat going to die. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, uh, and then, no, go back to two, three. A chief, a commander, a captain, as the leader, you're the one giving the order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is how when um, this is how when people shake their fist at uh, military people or uh, you know even the commander in chief or others who are in charge, it's not an easy thing to say. Okay, let's go to war because that leader, that commander, that captain knows that there are a certain number of people who are just not going to come back from this battle. No matter what we do, no matter how we prepare, no matter what, and the guy, person, woman, who makes that decision, they don't do that stuff lightly. And for us, the Monday morning quarterback, if you've never sit, been in that position to give that order and know that somebody's going to die, you need to shut up. Amen. You know? What we do, we do, we all this, yeah, 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 yeah. What, what he should do, what she should do. You, why don't you win and you go do it? Amen. But you didn't. You're not the captain. So therefore, you know, shaking your fist at the captain, the commander, the chief, no big deal. And, and, and commander's chief has to have an attitude. They don't care what you think. Because they have to give that decision and know that a certain number of people, they're just going to die, and that's all there's to it. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. So then, then the next one, uh, a leader is one who goes first. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, you've seen that in so many demonstrations and places. All right. So then here's my determination point, and I'm finishing up. It's really time to shake ourselves to take another look at God's vision for our lives and recommit to being the follower that he wants to use to make a leader. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need to re-examine our lives. Uh, as, as pastor here, I spend time in prayer for members of the congregation, I hear we talk, we share various things, and uh, it's 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 a uh, it's a part of my responsibility to listen close to what's going on in the lives of the people in this congregation. And when I sense and gather that people are really in a struggling state in life, then my heart says. What can I say? What can I do to help that person get hope to get out of that mess? Come on. And not continue to run around in circles unnecessarily Amen. about something that God has already handled. Amen. Mm -hmm. And what that brings me to is to say this. I'm willing to say to you, that following God is an awesome way to live. Amen. 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 Following God, no matter what <laughs> issues come up, mm -hmm. and doing what he says really brings victory Amen. 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 and peace. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife and I have spent uh, 
these last several, well, we do it all the time, but just uh, occasionally, we take opportunity to just look back over our lives and recall the marvelous things that God has done for us, specifically. And that gives us courage and confidence mm -hmm. to say to you, yeah. you don't have to keep crying over this same mess. Yeah. Just do. Find out what God said. Mm -hmm. And then do what he said. Amen. Commit to be the follower mm -hmm. that he's called you to be, to bring you to the place that when it's time for you to lead, then you'll be leading with confidence. Yeah. Leading with joy. Leading with wisdom and strength. Amen. And it all connects back to being a follower, imitator of the things that we know to be so in the word of God. Yeah. Um, God's word has the answer. Yeah. And uh, it's time for us. And I know pressure, I know, I know, I know, I know pressure comes, pressure comes. And I know things get so complicated and so complex. And I know there are times and places where you say, well, I just didn't have any other, I just couldn't leave them there. I just, you know, I had to get the money for, I had to do this, I had to, I, no, you don't have to. Especially. When you're already uneasy on the inside, anyhow. Because when you're doing it, if you're feeling uneasy about it, that means that's not God. Right. Yeah. Amen. And whenever you veer off the path of what God's word has to say, mm -hmm. there's going to be some uneasiness. Mm -hmm. Lots of it. And it's God saying to you, trust me. Yeah. Trust my word. Let me handle this. Bring all of those questions that you come up with. Well, what will people say? What will what will others think? Mm -hmm. How is this going to turn out? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, it's going to turn out exactly like God said it's going to turn out. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 When we develop confidence in just doing what his word tells us yeah. to do. Amen. Hmm? Amen. Um, I used this example. I don't know if it's a good example, but it works. <laughs> it worked for us, so to speak. Especially like when you have little children and uh, uh, that time back in the day when, when our little kids, uh, we were just having a fit. I'm telling you, we were just, uh, one of our kids wouldn't eat. I mean, you put the spoon up, they spit out. They hold their lips tight. And they cry, and they scream. And we were just having a hissy fit. We were just, oh, we're just up half the night. And we're trying to find, well, what time they eat? And we go to the store, and we buy 42 different types so we can find out which one they're going to like. And we open all of the little jars of baby food and try to get one. And then we would go to the doctor, doctor, our baby's going to starve to death. What can we do? They're not eating. The doctor said, when they're hungry enough, they'll eat. <laughs> yeah. But they scream, don't matter. They cry, don't matter. When they are hungry enough, they will eat. Mm. If that boy gets tired of being broke, mm. he'll get a job. Amen. You keep slipping the money. Right. You'll never get a job. <laughs> You'll never get a job. Why should you? Come on down. Come on down. I'm asking us to exercise, to, to, yes, to be bold, to follow God's word, and to stick with it. Amen. Stand here. And allow God to do what he does best. Amen. Because he will always do what he said. Yes. Hallelujah. In his word. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Okay. I'm going to stop. We're going to cover some more of these kind of things.
But I guess you got all you can handle today since you didn't. You wouldn't let me tell you other ways that I've seen people lay hands and lay whatever on whatever. <laughs> you know, I, I, I open my heart to receive messages from God to be a blessing to us. And it's a tremendous and consistent yearning in my spirit for us to get this, to get that space, that place of having this bold determination to just do what God said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Filter out all of the excuses and the possibilities and the complexities and just straight down the line mm -hmm. do exactly what God said. Yeah. And watch him produce the joy, the peace, the wisdom that we need. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let me invite you to stand up on your feet, if you will. I thank you for those of you watching on our Facebook Live. Remember again, share this um, Thank you for sharing this video on your page so that others might also have opportunity. Thank you for being a part of what it is. I believe the things that I teach are true. They're in the Word of God. And if you want to check out our website, stc.church, you'll find there more information about salvation and other ways to connect with us on our other social media sites. But at this moment right here, I want to share with you the gospel. The gospel is found in the gospel according to John chapter 3, verse number 16. And that, the words of that verse are on our screen here. And we're going to read it together out loud. And ready, read. For God so loved the world, yes, he that he gave his only begotten Son, really that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever believes in him will not perish. Amen. Hallelujah. When you get your family members, when you get your children, when you get your relationships mm -hmm. to understand and receive the love of God, mm -hmm. they will not perish. Mm -hmm. Amen. When they receive the love of God, yes. they will not perish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This gospel points us to salvation. Salvation is found Romans chapter 10, verse number 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We're using 9 for this example. We put it up on the screen so as we can read it together. I'm ready. Read. That thou shalt confess with thy mouth yeah. the Lord Jesus, and when shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's read that again. That thou shalt confess with thy mouth you bring your relationships to this place. You bring your family members to this place. You bring your relationships to co-workers. Work. You bring them to this place. They will be saved. Amen. And that means God takes the position of seeing to it that their lives conform to his plan, his purpose his destiny. And when you get them to there, to salvation, guess what? You can leave them alone. Amen. Amen. You can go to sleep. Yes, sir. Amen. You can save your money. Buy stuff you want. Yes, sir. Huh? So, if you haven't gotten them there, then yes, you'll worry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, you'll complain. Yes, you'll make sacrifice. But when you give them to God and let him have it, Hallelujah. he's big enough to handle it. Yes, yes, he is. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. He can take care of where they sleep. That's right. He can take care of the clothes they wear. Amen. He'll take care of the food they eat. And he'll give them a job. Hallelujah. <laughs> when you let them go. You get them saved. And when you get them to receive God's love and you get them saved, they will come to church. Mm -hmm. Now, they don't come to church and they don't go to the word of God. They, 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 they're going to continue to scuffle. And so why should you scuffle when they're not doing what they're supposed to do? Come on now, teach. Mm -hmm. You lead them with God. Yeah. Yeah. And he'll handle 
everything in their life. Pray this prayer out loud. Say, God in heaven. God in heaven. Listen to Pastor Scott today. This <laughs> guy is out there. But I believe your word is true. And I've heard your great love for me. And I've received your love through Jesus Christ. In Jesus all of my sins All of my sins are washed away. away. I receive from you, I receive from you salvation. salvation. I enter into, I enter into your, family. your family. I call you, I call you my, heavenly my heavenly Father. And thank you, and thank you. I, declare. I declare. I'm born again. I'm, born I'm saved. I'm saved. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you. Thank you for watching today. We look to see you again in Jesus' name. Amen. Goodbye for now.